Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this video, I'll be explaining what a shebang is on POSIX like platforms. Uh, Windows actually goes through a completely different setup of, of uh, figuring out how executables work, but we'll explain shebangs today. And I guess maybe at the end, I'll talk about Windows as well. But yeah, let's jump into that. Okay, so for a brief like TLDR about how Linux decides whether something is executable or not uh, is based on the file permissions. So um, if you look in what user bin has a bunch of executables, uh, you'll notice, let's just pick one. Let's pick zip. Uh, we'll use ls-al to look at the permissions there. And you'll notice here that it has these X's and that means that it has the executable bit set. Or let's, let's pick one that I can actually run. <laughs> um, ls, for example, also has these executable bits. Uh, and if you don't have an executable bit, you can't run that file directly as an executable. Uh, this is kind of used as a permission set, so you don't accidentally run things that aren't supposed to be runnable. Although, <laughs> there are occasionally bugs where things that are not supposed to be runnable are runnable, but whatever. Um, and there's kind of two types of executables. One is like binaries, like ELF binaries, which are just like compiled programs. And then there's scripts. And scripts are where shebangs come into play. And let's just make a sample script. It's just gonna be a shell script. Um, and we're just gonna put echo high into it. And you'll notice that if I try and run it right now, it is not executable. We get permission denied. And this is because those permission bits are not set. So if we look at t.sh, you'll see that it has read write for, I believe user and then group and um, other is just read. And if we wanted to make it executable, we can use chmod, change the mode, and add executable to t.sh. And now we can run this, this script. And by default, this script is, uh, is a shell script. And the extension isn't what does it. If I move this t.sh to t.py, which is what you would typically use for a Python file, You'll see that if I run this, it still runs if it's shell, even if this file contained like, you know, Python code. <laughs> Import OS, print, hello world. If we try and run that. Um, yeah, depending on what packages you have installed, I think if you have, what is it, image magic, that there's actually a command called import, and so it just like hangs mysteriously. Uh, <laughs> I've run into that way too many times, but anyway. Um, the extension of the file doesn't actually change how it gets executed, and that's where the shebang comes into play. If we wanted to make this a proper Python executable, we would add a special comment at the top of the file, and that's that's what's called a, a shebang. It comes from hashbang, because uh, this is the hash character, and this is you know, oct <laughs> octothorpe bang, bang being an exclamation mark. Um, and the shebang tells how the either operating system or shell, depending on your uh, where, where you're running it from, uh, it tells it how to evaluate this script. And usually it's supposed to be a program. And uh, let's just say we wanted to run this with Python 3. You might write user bin Python 3 here. And so this is a full path to some executable. Uh, it has to be a full path. You can't just do uh, Python 3. It will not work as you would expect. Bad interpreter, no such file or directory. So it's, it's required to be a full path. Uh, and so this is an example where we're pointing to user bin Python 3, and if we now run that t.py file, you'll notice that we print hello world and we can properly import. Now this is a little bit inflexible, and the shebang actually allows for a program name and a single argument. Um, this changes based on platforms, but that's that's pretty much what you can depend on it supporting. It's a single argument, and uh, or sorry, a path to a executable, and then a single argument. Uh, and since this always points to user bin Python 3, this is not the best because you might have a script that depends on dependencies in like a virtual environment or um, some Python path setup or something like that, uh, where you would need to point to a different Python executable. And there's a little trick that gets used a lot with shebangs, and that is to abuse the executable called env, um, which normally if you call env, it just prints out the ter or the environment variables, but env has this other feature where you can run executables. And so if you did like env, 
know, x equals one, bash dash c echo dollar x, uh, you'll see that, you know, env can change environment variables and then run an executable. Uh, oops, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so you can see I set x to 124 and then, you know, printed out 124. But you don't need to change the environment variables. You can just do env bash and it will run bash. Let me fix it out of that, a little bit confusing. Um, but yeah, so what this does is env will look up this executable on the path, so it doesn't need to be hard-coded to the system installed Python 3. And so this is kind of the, the best case scenario for how you would specify a shebang in a file. <clears throat> now there are some limitations to shebangs, and one of them is particularly annoying. <laughs> Because, you know, the whole the whole Linux mantra is like, oh, your file names can be as long as you want. But shebangs, no. They, they max out at 127 characters, which is actually, like, kind of a lot. Um, but if you've ever worked with, like, Jenkins or uh, other CI systems, which will often, like, have these monstrously long uh, paths where they check out code into, You'll often run into problems where like you build a virtual environment in that directory and suddenly none of the scripts work and you get a mysterious like bad interpreter error but yeah so i think that's all the talk about shebangs we could quickly talk about the uh the windows behavior here so the windows behavior is completely different oh that's not windows <laughs> open up command prompt here uh so windows does not support shebangs shebangs are kind of a, a linux idea actually demoing this earlier so the way that um the way that the way that windows decides how to run an executable is two parts well actually it's it's kind of three parts but i always forget oh it's percent path yeah <laughs> windows environment variables um but yeah so there's there's path that decides like where it will look for executables this is very similar to linux linux also has a path uh there are some special paths on windows that it'll always look at but don't worry about those. And on Windows, it will also look at the current working directory, which many people consider to be a security problem. Um, I tend to agree, but we're not gonna get into that today. And the other thing that Windows uses is this variable called pathext. And this shows which, which extensions on files are executable by default. And you'll see like you know, com executables, .exe, batch files, uh, batch files with a different extension, VBScript, JavaScript, some others, and, and Python. Now, interestingly, Python doesn't actually seem to work. Uh, I have this, this t.py file here, and if I try and run it, uh, <laughs> and get this error. This file does not have an app associated with it for performing this action. Please install an app, or if one is already installed, create an association with the default app's settings page. Um, so I guess you can change how this works, probably by associating the Python binary with pi extension. Um, but <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. Um, but yeah, Windows decides how to run these based on just the extension. And there isn't really an idea of like executable and not executable on Windows. But anyway, I think that's all I want to talk about. Thank you, Juicebox Hero, for sending in this question on my Twitch stream. Uh, if you guys have additional questions that you want to see or, uh, have me explain, you know, <laughs> Leave a comment below, show up in my stream, message me on Twitter, whatever you want to do. Uh, but thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.